The University of Tennessee Medical Center is our region's only academic medical center. Our mission is to serve through healing, education, and discovery. Our goal is to share the knowledge of our physicians and staff in these health education videos as you make healthcare decisions for yourself and your family. Well, urinary incontinence is simply the involuntary loss of urine, and it's something that's um, experienced by millions of women across the United States every year. And it, it, there are different types. Um, some women can have what's called stress urinary incontinence, where they will leak small amounts of urine uh, with coughing, sneezing, activity, maybe even sexual activity. Um, and then others can have what's called urge urinary incontinence, where they have an intense urge to urinate but many times can't make it to the restroom on time and will end up having rather large leakage episodes. Well, like any other medical problem, urinary incontinence uh, is diagnosed primarily uh, with a good history and physical examination. So in the history, we're uh, trying to assess um, how often is the patient urinating, how often are they leaking urine, uh, under what circumstances are they leaking urine, People with stress incontinence tend to leak under uh, times of abdominal strain, uh, coughing, sneezing, uh, maybe even laughing. Um, and that is usually due to someone that has an anatomic issue with the support that's underneath the urethra uh, or possibly a problem with the urethra it's, itself, uh, specifically the urethral sphincter. In terms of uh, urge urinary incontinence, um, we want to gather are they having leakage episodes um, that are associated with urinary frequency and urinary urgency? And then how large is that leakage episode? Because many times that will tell us if this is more stress uh, incontinence or if it's more urge incontinence. After the um, history, we can do a physical exam looking for those types of anatomic problems that can cause stress incontinence um, and looking for other things such as vaginal atrophy that can contribute to urge incontinence. Following a history and physical exam, we have some uh, diagnostic workup that can be done in the clinic. This is primarily with uh, urodynamics or systemetrics that will help us characterize the types of urinary incontinence that they have and not only their urinary incontinence but how well do they empty their bladder um, because many times that will come into play uh, when we're deciding on the appropriate medical therapy. Well stress urinary incontinence uh, is treated in a number of different ways um, starting with the more conservative therapies uh, the standard um, pelvic floor muscle exercises, or what are primarily uh, known as Kegel exercises, can be used in an effort to try to close the urethra uh, during times of uh, strain. Um, alternatively, there are some pessaries out there uh, that are called incontinence dish pessaries. And pessaries primarily have been used uh, for pelvic organ prolapse in the past, uh, but there are a few pessaries out there that can be used to help address individuals that have stress incontinence to provide some of that support underneath the urethra that they're lacking. Uh, once you've exhausted those more conservative means, we turn to more surgical therapies. And depending on whether or not the patient has bladder neck mobility or how much mobility there is of the bladder neck during times of strain or uh, coughing, sneezing, uh, the patient can either have a urethral bulking procedure if there's little to no bladder neck mobility, uh, or if there is sufficient bladder neck mobility, they may qualify to have a mid-urethral sling and mid-urethral slings uh, are really considered to be the gold standard uh, by most people for genuine stress urinary incontinence. Urge urinary incontinence uh, is treated in a number of different ways. Like stress incontinence, many times we can uh, initially treat with uh, pelvic floor physical therapy, Kegel exercises, uh, even some dietary modifications as there are some things uh, in the diet that can uh, certainly put you at increased risk of having urge incontinence episodes. So with pelvic floor uh, physical therapy uh, and dietary modifications, we can actually um, help out quite a few people. And if not, there are some medications out there called anticholinergic medications uh, that can be used in an effort to stop those bladder contractions. Urge incontinence is, is typically a problem not so much with anatomic like you see in stress incontinence, uh, but you have more of a problem with bladder contractions. So those anticholinergic medications are designed to stop some of those abnormal contractions. 
If you try medications and you're not getting anywhere with the medications, we do have some alternative therapies, um, specifically neuro, uh, neuromodulation or interstem, uh, which can help uh, knock out some of the abnormal signals that are causing those bladder contractions. We hope you'll join us for another medical moment. Visit utmedicalcenter.org or call the Healthcare Coordination Office at 865-305-6970 to learn about services available at the University of Tennessee Medical Center.